Hello again. This is Pastor Deborah, and this is another class in this King's International Spiritual Care University. We are still in the basic courses, and this is course or class number four. Is everybody here? Everybody got your notebooks? tablets, your iPhones? Has everybody arrived and sitting down? Great. I don't like to start, but I do sometimes. I do honor those who come to learn and welcome. If you're watching this uh, on the YouTube channel or on the website, or if you're here in person, the basic courses are going to give you some background some basic concepts, ancient history, and I've so far I've been telling you a little bit about my journey, how I went from being coming, how I was a mental health therapist, helping people from the world's way and the world's system to help resolve problems and issues that people, families, nations and governments were having to a brand new way that I knew nothing about helping people the Lord's way. On the first three classes you learned about first you had to find out for yourself were you called, were you purposed, were you born to help people. That is vital. It doesn't matter if you're called to work in business, in the government, whatever. Are you called to help humanity? That is number one. When you find that purpose, then you can begin. The second video I talked about, I uh, can't remember what it was now. Oh my goodness. The second video was, I gave you some history about myself, the journey that I took, and I had to learn some things. I remember now. I had to come to know what did I believe about helping people versus what my faith community told me, what the world's way was telling me, what all my education had told me. I had to challenge all of that and I had to find out for myself after lots of research, pondering and meditating, classes and more classes, books and more books, videos and history, what did I personally believe was the way that I was to help people. I had gone from, as I told you, the system of mental health counseling and believing <clears throat> that these mental health issues, substance abuse issues, were of a biological, scientific nature. I learned that way. I worked in that system. I even got paid, can you believe it? for providing that professional medical service to clients and patients. And I believe with every ounce of thought and concept that that was the way I was supposed to help people, which is the way for some people to help people. But I had to learn and discover what was my purpose? What was the way I was to help people? And of course, in the, I think it was the second video, you learned about this challenge I had with the faith-based community I was a part of and the way society was and culture. And I couldn't talk to anybody. I just studied. Eventually, I came to a personal discovery of 
about myself and what I believed about how to help people and how I was to be a part of that. In the third video I talked about, or third class, about my valley of tears that I had to walk through, the pain and the crying that I went through for months and months, the anointing I got, the ordain ordination I got to be a spiritual mother, the anointing that people were going to come and talk to me in the spirit realm to hear the words I had to say. I sat in a class teaching about spiritual things called the strong man. What's his name and what is his game? I had eventually come through the Valley of Tears and had become a mighty soldier, had an attitude. I wrote that poem called Satan, Watch and See, which is on the website. But what I want to talk about this class is from that position, which had very little knowledge, was that my eyes my spiritual eyes had to see and my spiritual ears had to hear. What was I entering into? Was this something new? Something so superstitious? Something from the back countries of ignorant people? This new way of helping people? That the strong man book was talking to me about? Spirits? Was this anything new? My eyes and ears had to go back to ancient, ancient history of humanity. I had to learn to watch videos about ancient writings, pictures on walls, study the hieroglyphics, study the pharaohs, study Greece, the philosophers, study the gods. Greece, mythology. I had to study beliefs, ancient spiritual uh, communities. How did spirituality, how did faith fit in with humanity? I had to go back. My eyes and my ears had to study ancient, hidden information about this role. I'm learning about some things called spirits that were listed in the strong man. What's his name? What's his game? What's his name? That these Assembly of God missionaries had discovered in Costa Rica. They said they were in the book. They were listed in the Holy Bible. They were talked about in the Quran. They were talked about in ancient Egypt. Demons, half man, half beast, gods and goddesses. Oh dear, this was not in the mental health world. This was not, there was no class on gods and goddesses and their role they played in ancient civilizations. There was no role of shamans and mystics and healing and curses and blessings and the power of words spoken by shamans and medicine men or the priest of the pharaohs or the magicians who could do powerful tricks. There was nothing in the mental health realm of any of that. So, in order for my eyes to see, my ears to hear, I had to have, I was learning on several paths at the same time. One, I was studying ancient history, watching videos about 
the Greeks, the Persians, the ancient empires, their magicians, their spirituality, their high priest, their nations, and how spirituality, how the high priest and priestesses, how the shamans, the medicine men, how these people connected to a spiritual realm were integral and a part of society. And they were considered the healers. One of the great movies that I did watch was called The Egyptian. It was about an Egyptian doctor who discovered the power of spirituality and worship a higher power. Oh, that opened my eyes. I had to go back and study the ancient occult ways, the ancient societies, the secret societies the Illuminati. I had to go and study the movies about how brainwashing came about. I had to go back and look at ancient, ancient history. The role of spirituality and spirits and dreams and people interpreting dreams and magicians and the occult and potions. I studied Merlin. I studied the Druids. I even went back farther, back into Rome, back into Greece, back into Pompeii, back, back I went. I kept going back. So one part of my journey to reconcile what I was hearing in this Sunday school class from this book of Assembly of God Ministers, the Robertsons, about spirits slash demonic spirits, strong men, I had to see if what they were saying was true. Did this realm, this unseen spiritual realm, these things, were they a part of humanity? way, way back. And what did I find? Yes. They've always been there. And they've always been a part of humanity. So I studied a lot of ancient civilizations. I read what the leaders had around them in their thrones. Magicians. Powerful people that moved. Even the kings were connected to these powers. They were even believed to be a god on earth. People were trying to figure out nature, how to keep it at bay. There's a great movie, another one I watched, called The Gods of Egypt, The 300, and the Eeyores, and Darius, Persia, who believed he was the king of kings, and the lord of lords, and the gods of gods. I was seeing this stuff way back there. Then I kept doing that. I still do that now. Then I had to study modern society. And I had to study like the Black Plague and what people believe caused that. Then I studied the Crusades. And I studied all the civilizations. Hinduism, Buddhism, the Quran, trying to determine if this new way of helping people, which really I discovered was not new, it was ancient. It had been hidden from me and under dust and flesh on the world. It was locked away from me. But I was slowly uncovering these truths about this world of spirits, spirituality, this unseen realm that had been a part of humanity 
and in many nations and cultures, it still is. We can go into a lot of areas and we'll find voodoo, shamans, mystics. In the Hindu, they're trying to, their monks will go into trances. They will try to reach nirvana. Then in, also in the Hindu, they believe that if we burn the biological body upon death, there's reincarnation, a rebirth. So I'm learning. I'm growing in the knowledge this was nothing new. In fact, the way of mental health was something new. But medicine goes all the way back. People had biological problems, got attacked by lions, saber-toothed lions, got sicknesses, diseases. In the Egyptian movie, which you can find on YouTube, <clears throat> you will discover this Egyptian saw patients, would give them medicines, would look at the biological body. So that's been around. Medicine has been around. And so had this worship and this higher powers and these gods and this spiritual realm. Another great movie that'll help you is watch the book of Ruth about how a young girl was sold by her father, which is nothing new because of poverty. Too many children to the priesthood of Kamosh. They were in the land of Moab. Kamosh was their god, and they would take a young child, train them up, get them to memorize some prayers, sacrifice them. And in the book, that was supposed to happen to Ruth, but a blemish came on her arm, and they couldn't have any child be sacrificed be pure and innocent with any physical blemishes, so she was spared. And another one, and how it worked was Kamosh was a stone statue, and they would put the little child, cover it with a blanket, after it said some prayers and to this statue, this god called Kamosh, to protect them from their enemies, from pestilence, from sickness from evil things to be their protector. Then they would sacrifice the child, stab it with a sharp, the little child, and it called it a golden beak, a knife, cut the heart out, serve it up to the statue, throw the child's body, the heart, into the fire. They believed that this Kamosh, this god, would protect their land. My goodness, I'm going back to stuff that I was reading about in the Strongman book, hearing about in this Sunday school class. A whole world was being opened up to me from ancient days, the ancient times of humanity. The names of the goddesses, the gods. So go study Greek the intervention of gods and goddesses in humanity. There's another one called Immortals. Excellent. Go study also the gods of Egypt. Uh, Gerald Butler's in that one. Another good movie that Gerald Butler played in, Machine Gun, The Machine Gun Preacher. True story over in Africa. And we see a lot of this now, these spiritual worlds fighting. If you belong to one God and you decide to leave it and go worship and serve another God somehow, you're attacked and persecuted. This has been going on forever. My goodness. But you didn't hear much about that in helping people in the mental health way. What? Are these, yes, all these movies are on YouTube. Yes, Machine Gun Preacher, it's a true story. I actually ran into one of his helpers in the TNW flea market. He was there, gave him some books, 
some blankets to take because he's going back to Africa. How a lot of, there was a, a guy named Nicky Cruz who grew up in gangs. And how the love of a pastor touched him. So I was entering into, this was back in 1995, 96, into a realm I knew nothing about. I was faithfully sitting in the Sunday school class, reading this book, studying out the scriptures, looking things up on Wikipedia, YouTube, buying books from bookstores, studying. But then I had to have another level. My physical eyes and my spiritual eyes had to see this. My physical ears my spiritual ears had to hear. I had to have some personal experiences to go, okay, this stuff is real. Where I'll begin is when I was in, even, I believe I was on the prayer team at this church. And it was late at night. It was maybe getting close to midnight. We're all getting ready to go home. This heavy set lady had gone up to the altar and she was getting up and she starts to pass out. So they go get a big size wheelchair for her and because she was a big lady. And as they are helping her down into the wheelchair, she abruptly, now I'm watching, my eyes are seeing, my ears are listening. She abruptly stands up, starts barking like a dog hissing like a cat doing her psh, psh, rah, rah, I'm going to myself okay if anybody in the mental health world saw this they would bring out the straight jacket and take her directly to the psychiatric ward this was a mental health problem that was my first thought when I saw and heard these strange behaviors. She made it out of the wheelchair to the steps and the ushers had to hold her down and a man came and I could hear him saying, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you in the name. I bind you. Be silent. I'm going, what is going on? That did not sound like a normal psychiatric way to deal with a mental health problem. And the lady sort of just went limp. And the ushers picked her up, put her back in the wheelchair, and wheeled her back into a room. I didn't know what happened. My eyes were seeing something. My ears were hearing something. That my first determination, she belongs in a psychiatric hospital. She needs a straitjacket. I had seen this. I had volunteered in psychiatric hospitals, state hospitals. I'd seen this before in the jails. That was my beginning. To see, my eyes to see, my ears to hear of a realm I knew nothing about. I later learned that what this lady was, she was a witch from a neighboring state had come down to this church to speak curses over it. But there were some things in her that got agitated, got mad at this presence that was there. And when they got so mad, that's when they started barking and hissing like a snake and a cat. And I'm going, huh? What's a witch? Why would they come down here to do this? This church was just trying to help people find a God. Why it was whatever was in her, which they didn't really say, why was it so mad? I'm beginning to hear things 
to say things that were not explainable from a mental health view. Then what somebody explained to me that these were demonic spirits. And they were agitated and being tormented by this presence that was there in the church. And they were reacting and responding to it. They were angry. Because they, they were being tormented some way. And the only way to stop it was for this man to say, I bind you. I'm thinking, words, binding. Remember, I'm ignorant at this time, barely in the class, but my eyes were beginning to see, and my ears were beginning to hear. So I'm sitting, continually sitting in the Sunday school class. I'm learning, which we will go through it, the book, as we get into probably the intermediate, I'm beginning to hear things. One of the stories I heard was that during the Vietnam War, there used to be Buddhist priests out in the fields. They were cursing by words the American soldiers that were there. We heard there were prostitutes, drugs, all kinds of things that followed them. And these Buddhist priests were cursing them, so when they returned home, They'd never have any peace. They would always have fear and torment and feel suicidal. <clears throat> and they would always be under attack. And at this time, that was what in the Vietnam veterans was going on. They called it post-traumatic stress disorder. Now I'm thinking, this is interesting. Okay, so now I feel I had more incidences. Whew, I saw a lot of things. So I get on the deliverance team after I go through the class, on the prayer team, I could learn how to touch people, pray with them, a simple prayer, touch them, Lord. Fill them with your love, you know, real simple. I had gotten the dress down code. I think I did it on Friday nights. I filled out my application after maybe a year in the class with a strong man. I observed the coordinator watching me on the prayer team. I didn't know her. She didn't know me. I filled out the application. It went to the senior pastor. He had to pray over it and hear from God if I was okay to be on the team that she had to give permission. So I got on the team. And I proceeded, I think my schedule was Friday nights I would be in the sanctuary. So when somebody started acting up or weird, I would deal with it. Didn't matter what it was, flesh or spirit. That was my responsibility. Uh, and the ushers were with me. And then on Saturday nights, I would sit with a group of people, two or three, in a separate room in another building. And we would proceed to be exorcist and cast out devils according to the strong man. Well, I had a, a man that was already in the sanctuary. I had a couple of times I would hang on to his belt loop when he took off to fight, when he got called by the ushers. So I had to sit on a certain pew we had to keep an eye on the ushers. If they signaled us, we took off. Uh, we went to bathrooms, men's bathrooms, the stalls, women's under desk, outside in another building, outside in the street, wherever we had to go, we went. And because I was learning this, I bind you in the name of Jesus, according to Matthew 18 and 18. I had to use that. So here's my first experience. So I only get a few weeks of following this man who really wasn't a great teacher. I just watched and I listened as he ministered to somebody who was crying, screaming, yelling. The ushers are standing around. Remember, 
My eyes have to see this realm that I'm learning about. My ears have to hear. So I get there one Friday night very early. And they tell me he has been released from the team. There was some conflicting issues. They let him go. I had the sanctuary all by myself. There was no training for it. There was no classes, no books. So I sat on the pew by myself. And I got a call the first night. Some elderly lady was in a, was taken to a room. Elderly lady was in a wheelchair. She was visibly shaking, foot stomping, hand shaking, body shaking, with a husband standing next to her. I have the chief of police, the head usher, other the youth pastor, the children's pastor, head prayer team person, another policeman, all the leaders, and me. And my prayer was, oh, Lord, I hope this binding works. I've never done it. I have never said it before because I was on the line. My belief, my faith had to kick into a high gear. So I proceeded. Now, here's what I said. Father, according to your word, I bind the spirit of Antichrist in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of bondage. I bind the spirit of death. I bind the spirit of error. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of haughtiness and heaviness. I bind the spirit of infirmity. I bind the spirit of jealousy. I bind the spirit of lying spirit. I bind the spirit of perverseness and perversion. I bind the seducing spirit. I bind the spirit of whoredoms in the name of Jesus according to my authority. Be bound according to Matthew 18 and 18. And the lady just started getting calmer, calmer, calmer. And I'm going, okay. The stuff works. Now I am being tested watched by all the leaders of the church, the security, every ministry in there. Because here's the test. Did I have the goods? Was my words powerful? Did I believe? Could I handle it? Her shaking stopped. Her trembling stopped. I never touched her. And all I could say to myself, okay, this stuff is real. My eyes were seeing. My ears were hearing. I also had to see the hate of these things that you can't see with your natural eyes looking at me. I saw that and a man that was twice my height sitting right to his face when I called out the word the spirit of schizophrenia. You should have seen the hate. He was his hand was in reaching distance of doing this to me. I had to see them. I had to learn to I jumped into didn't know it, the discerning of spirits. I could see them moving through the body. I could see him when death came. I'll tell you another story. We had an usher, sweet man, married. And I get called to the usher's room. And he is choking like he's having. And they call me. He's laid out on the floor, turning blue, gray, not moving. I knew it was the spirit of death that was at work. And I'm binding and binding, but it ain't working. My faith had not gotten to that level yet. Because when you get to the spirit of death, you are at a powerful level. So the coordinator eventually got there. And then she re revealed to me there were some issues in this usher's life. I'm with the usher. Life and death were in my hands. 
My eyes were seeing things in the sanctuary. I had to sit up on the balcony. During praise and worship, here's what I did. I'd watch people praise and worship. I had to determine, was their behaviors I'm watching, was it pure, carnal, natural flesh? Was it demonic in nature? Was it godly? Because you could be any one of those things. I had to look at people, to study their actions, pray, discern flesh or evil spirits. I had to, my eyes had to see. My ears had to hear. I had to be on notice. Sometimes I never even made it into the sanctuary. Somebody's having problems in the parking lot. What I always got called to do was to get them into the church so they can continue on. I'd be taken out, and usually the first thing that I would have to deal with was the sins of the forefathers, the ancestors. And we had some guy, he was there, had an actual machete with him. We didn't have a lot of security at the time, you know, didn't know. And he tried to get to the altar, and he got stuck, bound, hands behind his back like he was tied up. I had to drag him to get him to the altar so his heart's desires could be taken care of. I've been in rooms where somebody goes nuts, gets on the furniture, runs all around, coming after me to kill me, to choke me. I've been in situations as were part of my training where we had a 16-year-old girl and six of the biggest ushers could not hold her body down. She was spitting at me. I'm trying to bind up this stuff, calm it down, because she is not there. I don't knew, did not know what happened to the person's will at that time. It's pure one-on-one -on -one demonic in me. It's spitting at me, spitting in my face, trying to bite me, cuss at me. If it could have gotten free, it would either have attacked me and clawed me and everything they could or it would have run. 16 year old girl. I'd, my eyes had to see people's eyes roll back in the back of their head, tongues coming out like a snake, slithering on the floor like a snake. Prayer team, intercessors on their hands and knees barking like a dog and believing that that was the Holy Spirit. I had to be called to things people paralyzed. Children, people puking green junk up. Some of the first deliverance sessions I was in, I just held somebody's ponytail while they puked in a garbage can. And what was the puke? Some kind of black stuff that I had never seen come out of a stomach they were getting some deliverance. Strange things my eyes had to see, my ears had to hear. Things that if I had looked at it with the eyes and ears of a mental health counselor, I would have assumed they were mentally ill. But I had to see with different eyes. And I had to see things that were, oh, that's not in the book. Because The Strong Man was a very positive book. It didn't talk much about the resistance. I had to study all the things like yoga, other alternative medicines, the little things that uh, Chinese do with the little needles, cupping. I had to study aromas, had to study witchcraft. And what am I doing? I'm learning. I had to study the power of words and curses. I had to study this thing called the anointing. When I spoke, 
to bind things. Stop it. On earth, in somebody's dirt body. But there was a power behind that that would freeze it, stop it, bind it in the spiritual. I had entered into, it seemed like a war. And there was a powerful enemy, unseen to me, unknown to me, in people's bodies. They were in church. They were Christians. Some of the things I saw that came out of people's mouths, some of the things I heard. We had this one lady, she was very, very sweet. She had gotten cancer of some kind. And the cancer doctor suggested you take yoga because it was the cancer treatments would be very stressful. And she needed to be able to have some release and stress management and some things in her life. So she took yoga. So she had some other issues. So she was one of our Saturday night, I was in there, uh, people we did deliverance on. And when we got to that, things that came out of her mouth was, sounded like an ancient Chinese man, not her voice, from 5,000 years ago. I had encountered something that she picked up from going to yoga. A lot of people didn't know that yoga, even though it stretches and your body feels better, the yoga is way, way back, they uh, created these positions to be worship positions to a god, which was not uh, the Christian god. So when people go and do that, they're actually, actually worshiping the god of yoga. So she got something. She didn't know she had it. If we had somebody who had been in witchcraft, they're kind of knowledgeable of some of the things they have invited in. But most people are very ignorant. They were ignorant of the generations, words said by parents or great-grandparents. I had to learn about that back in the 1920s, part of my eyes to see in here, that in America, one of the parlor games was to have seances, have psychics play with the Ouija board. There was nothing wrong with it. That was a natural thing for white Protestant people to do. It was fun. And what happened was that traveled down. How about the magic eight ball? That traveled down through the generate Doors were opened. And it would travel through the generations. Unbeknown to anybody that your great, great grandparent or great something did any of that. Then I had to go back and study, like I said, the ancient Druids. The days before, when we call them pagan religions. And I had to study every faith. And I had to study all of this stuff. Brought me up today to the witches, the warlocks, the priests, the high priest, secret societies, Satanism, all the different psychics, palm reading. <clears throat> I had to study it all. My spiritual eyes, the eyes of my soul were being opened. I was having to see a world, always been here, really wasn't hiding, but when you were in the world and the system of mental health and you saw people's problems from a mental health side, biological, chemical, science, rational, all of this other stuff was superstition. didn't mean anything. It could be a witch, a shaman, voodoo priest in Haiti, over in New Orleans. People just kind of laughed at you, weren't real. That wasn't what mental health was. It was your right to serve and worship any god you wanted to. But that didn't cause any problems, and you really weren't dealing with these demons, these evil, horrible creatures. 
that we see in movies or we envision, Dante's Inferno, those things couldn't be inside of us. We're good people. That's what I ran into in my very early days. But my eyes of my physical body had to see the biological body being uh, tormented, being uh, reacting to the things of the spirit realm. My ears had to hear people sitting out in the hallway if I walked by and they hissed like a snake, tongue coming out like a snake. Then I had to learn about the Illuminati and their mind program, the monarch mind control program, the abuse that was done, what it looks like to get a person compliant. I had to study the Manchurian candidate with Frank Sinatra, still watch it, about how abuse and torture can change a person, compartmentalize things. I had to study Satan and his kingdom. My eyes and ears had to learn about him. What happened to him up here? Why he ended up down here? What is he trying to do? Why does he hate us so much? Why does he torment us so much? I had to look at patterns of the highest power, the highest God that there is. And I had to see that in Satan's kingdom. All while I'm sitting in a Sunday school class, reading books, being on the prayer team, I recommend that everybody learn how to pray with people, learn how to do intercession, be under authority of your church till you are released. If you have a deliverance team, get on it. If you don't, get under somebody. There's some great people. I just listened to one this morning, Derek Prince, who's passed on. He was a Greek theologian, philosopher. He got into deliverance. He teaches it very university style. It is not scary. He uses the Word of God. The Catholic Church teach it. It's only when people don't want to see it they make fun of it, superstitious. And some of the people that do it will use some people who do some crazy things. Uh, we see it on TV in voodoo when they're killing chickens and spitting things. That makes us believe in the rational, reasonable world of medicine. That's not us. That's just superstition. Okay, but not us. I had to learn that this world back here was working behind the scenes in government, politicians, Supreme Court judges, lawyers, family members, businesses, governments, in the gangs, in the mafias, in witchcraft. But all we see is this right here. And I ended up going back here into this unseen spiritual realm where my eyes had to see both my natural eyes and my spiritual eyes. My natural ears and my spiritual ears had to hear. I had to have not only knowledge from books, history of spirituality and spirits and gods and goddesses in the life of humans and humanity. I had to have personal experience in a church under leadership. I had to step out on my own and apply the principles I had been learning. Sat faithfully in the Sunday school class, faithfully on the deliverance team, prayer team for years. I had to learn about the gifts of the Spirit. I had to learn about my authority. I had to learn a lot. I just stayed put read, watched YouTube, watched movies, and I learned. My spiritual eyes and my physical eyes were learning to become one, to see everything from a spiritual nature, 
my ears were unstopped. They were hearing. I had to be able to hear them that were coming to me, that would be brought to me in the spirit. I had to be able to hear them. <clears throat> I had to be, I'll give you another incident. I was in the gym on a elliptical and there was a young lady sitting with a, one of the workers and he was pounding her away with Christianity, the wrong way to do it. And her spirit left her body and ran over to me to stand next to me like a little child. She said to me in the spirit, you're different than all the others. So I had to be very sensitive on phone calls when a spirit would come in through somebody else. I would have multiple conversations with through one person on the phone. I had to peer behind emails. I had to peer behind people in church that looked good. They looked okay. I had to look at eyes. And here's one of the tests that I took. This lady who was a witch here in town. She came and she got prayer and here's how it works. Oh, your spirit failed. Somebody would say to her, oh, yes, I am. I have been spirit filled since birth. You look at her eyes, they were jet black. Different conversations, different kinds of spirits. So I had to learn. And I had to have eyes to see behind the flesh. I had to have ears to hear things that, like when I, I think I told on one tape, I've none of these, this one lady wanted me to give her a hug before she died. But it wasn't her, it was somebody else. Wait till an animal comes up to you and your spiritual discerning kicks in and somebody's in that animal. They were following me all over. They were going into people in nursing homes, into cats, into dogs. I was seeing their presence in places. Hmm, this is interesting. I was learning how to talk to them in the spirit, receive them, hear them, even when I'm driving the car. Learning, learning. This was in probably about 1996, 97. But my eyes had to see, my ears had to hear. I'm still in the basic classes because you can't really step out and do a lot on your own. You have to be under teachers and tutors and covering. You have to be reading and studying and learning and looking up things in the dictionary. This was a whole world I knew nothing about. And I jumped in because I knew I was called to help people. I knew I was called to help them, not from a mental health way, but from a different way that I knew nothing about. And I had to learn and study. So this basic class is to just tell you about how not only do you have to know your have a purpose to do that. And that you have to know what you believe about this kind of helping. You have to go through the valley of tears. You have to be anointed. You have to have your purpose given to you. You have to come out the end and be able to declare to Satan, you're coming. And then your eyes must see your ears must hear that realm, that world, the silent cries where there's no words said, a look where there's no tears. I must be able to see, I ask him all the time, what does this look like in the spirit? What do their spirits look like? Where are they? Manchurian candidate when he would get triggered by a command. Was he just a robot? Well, if you get hypnotized, <clears throat> we all kind of laugh about it. 
Somebody goes up and they hypnotize you. And they tell you when you hear a, be a bell ringing, you'll cluck like a chicken. So you come out and you think nothing, nothing happened, and they ring a bell and you start clucking like a chicken. What is going on? I had to study that. I had to see the condition of the mind and the heart when a demonic spirit takes over everything. Then I had to even learn that there are some demonic spirits that can take your physical body and change it genetically. You can actually become more animal. And these people have completely sold out their entire body everything. We see it in the movies with Dracula, the werewolves, the vampires, and how their whole body changes. I had to study all that. I had to study the cause. I had to study goddess worship. I had to study the masons. I had to study the eastern star. I had to study the secret society, the skull and bones. I had to study the Illuminati. I had to study everything. So I could peer behind the flesh and see the world back here and what's going on. So that was my basic beginning in training on basic spiritual care from the king in his university to help people, not from a mental health counseling way, not the world's way of science and medicine and biology, but from a spiritual care way, from the spiritual, working in the spiritual against spiritual things. So that is what everybody's going to have to learn, go through, both their natural eyes and ears must see and hear that world, that realm. Be comfortable in it, not frightened of it. Be come to the conclusion it's real. People are in it. They're serving it. So enjoy. Take another class. Do more studying. Watch all the movies I told you. Go to a bookstore, go to the spiritual warfare section, spiritual section, read. I read some books about satanic high priest. They were not nice. How they trained the young ones. To cut eyes out and hearts out without a moment's noise. Do you know another great movie that helped me was The End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Excellent movie about how society got fixated on New Year's Eve while Satan and his followers were off on their own taking care of spiritual business while everybody else is over here in Jericho was trying to save a girl. And he believed there was time and if, if one person could believe. And he didn't really believe, but he saw things. Excellent movie, The End of Days, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You'll see him in the church, squared off with something. And he thought he could fight it with his gun. He had to throw it down. Can't fight this stuff with guns and knives. It shows the spirit world opening up. It shows how doctors and nurses would take a little baby. Feed it snake blood. Care for it. Raise it up to be married to Satan. Have a child to bring in. Some excellent movie. You think Arnold's got a lot of stuff in him that a lot of these, like Denzel Washington, Gerald Butler, Matthew McConaughey. They're trying to tell you about worlds they know about. They're bringing you, because they don't just go into these movies without studying getting into character, believing in it. They're trying to talk to you. End of days. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Go look at the 300. Then the one that called The Empire Begins, where Darius becomes a god. Excellent. 
Study ancient civilizations. Go study, I think, what's it called? The immortals. The gods of Egypt. Study. They're making the movies for us. Then when you need to learn how to be a soldier and fight, you study the Allies in World War II. You look at Germany, and you study the history of Germany. Why they did what they did in two war, world wars, World War I and World War II. And then they carried it on over, and they conquered the same people. And they formed the master country called the European Union. And Germany's the hub. And now England is trying to break free, and it's a mess. But you go back and study Hitler. You study the Nazi. It was a religion. The occult was in there. You had drugs. You had sex. You had a belief system about finding Atlantis, the master race, which goes back to the Greece, that only certain people were to run the world. You study how the Germans were embedded in every city and village and on, on every bridge and what it took for the Allies to free a continent. But that didn't stop the spiritual things in Germany. They just proceeded with trade and business, forming a European Union, locking up the nations and the states. They're not sovereign. That was not the original plan. They tried that once if you go back in the old testament the tower of babel they were all supposed to spread out over the world to different nations and cultures but they didn't do that they all stayed around this guy around the tower well god said that ain't gonna work because your hearts are not right we're gonna bring some confusion split now go where i told you to go go be your own nation have your own culture you can come into treaties, but don't give up your freedom. Don't give up your sovereignty. Don't give up your borders. I have said to everybody in different places, because this God who created humanity believed that until your heart is changed, really changed, you will end up serving the other guy. And you will enslave, and you will take capture through treaties, through business, through trade. And then when they want to leave, you won't let them. So it's almost like England's going through World War III again. As long as the hearts are not changed and people do not see the spiritual behind what's going on, we have a mess. So I just thought I'd throw that in. I had to keep a berry up because I might be exposing some things and I might have some attacks. Because I have had to live under scrutiny, spy satellites, while all my things are tapped, because I know a lot of things spiritually, and I have been poisoned. They've tried to kill me in my own home. I get on the list to be shot, murdered, killed, all the time, because I have knowledge and information about the spiritual realm that they don't want out. They want you to stay up here with this stuff. Just believe whatever they tell you. But back here, something else is going on. But I didn't get there at first. At first, I was very basic. Didn't know anything. I had to learn a lot. But I kept going. Because I knew my call was to help people in this deep spiritual world. I wasn't afraid of them. I knew if I was called and I had some power and backing. It took a long time to get there, so take your time. Learn. Open your eyes, see and hear, study. This is Pastor Deborah. This is basic class number four. Eyes to see and ears to hear. They must be opened. Love always and forever, Pastor Deborah. I hopefully to get this up maybe today. 
we could take another class. Once I get them all up, I'll try to bring up some continuing education courses. But learn, grow, be challenge yourself, look behind the curtain like in The Wizard of Oz and see what's really going on. There's two kingdoms down here. The kingdom of heaven with the kingdom of God influencing the world or the kingdom of darkness with Satan and his people. It's one of the two. You serve one or the other. There is no neutrality with either one. The part is the serving. You can believe in one but not serve him. You can believe in him but you think you're not serving him. Death is a part of it. Money is a part of it. Power and control is a part of it. Drugs are a part of it. Everything on planet Earth is a part of these two kingdoms. Coming out of the heart, coming through the mind, through the physical body. And if it doesn't come out through the foot, it just stays back here where I have to work all the time. So enjoy. I hope you join. We need the help. Love always and forever. Pastor Deborah. Come back again to another class. Love having you.